here we are. This is the day where I think we're going to load these up and uh, make them go away. I've got a few more to fuck up and uh, get ready for the truck. But this is a cold, nasty day. It's raining, and believe it or not, it's below freezing. It's about 30 degrees, and it's just a nasty day. So what I have to do is basically finish bucking up these bigger logs right here, trimming them up a little bit, basically making them ready for the log buyer to grade. And then once he grades, this truck is going to come up real time. They're going to put them right on the truck. And uh, it's either a good day for me or a disappointing day. You just never know, do you? You know what I'm saying? You just never, never know. And I see one right there I got to cut. I worked out here until dark and I just ran out of light, ran out of energy. But on a day like this, you know, what kind of saw do you want? Because that's what this subject is usually about is chainsaws, right? If I was a feller buncher, it wouldn't matter, right? You just go inside the cab and turn on the heat and turn on the radio. But a little guy like me, or a farmer, or a smaller logger, you know, with uh, less than modern equipment, this is a, this is your day. This is both the payday, but this is also the work day. You know, this is our world. You gotta work with whatever the weather gives you. And right now, the weather gave me a 30 degree day with rain. <laughs> so, what's the best saw in a day like this? The shortest bar I can get away with and the lightest saw that I can get away with. They get these done and unfortunately I don't have that. I, what I've got is I got a good saw with a too long a bar. And that's going to make it a little bit of a pain in the neck to buck these up because you got to keep the bar away from the next log in the stack, you know what I'm saying? A 20 inch bar or a 24 would be perfect. A 28 is just a little bit too long for this work. And if you notice, it has nothing to do with bending over. It has to do with uh, one bar. It has to do with one log and its proximity to the next. So anyway, I'm going to set the camera down somewhere. I don't know how much we're going to get. I'm really kind of cold and don't really care that much, to be honest with you. I just need to get it done. Really soaked out there. 
and uh, learned a couple of things that I kind of knew but learned again. You've got to learn over and over when you're old like me. And that 28 works really, really nice for uh, felon, for me. It does, for all the reasons I had talked about before. And I happen to like the uh, Husqvarna X Tufts a little bit better because they're a little stiffer. Now, I know that may sound goofy to some people because you always want the lighter weight bar, but I had a little bit better luck with my plunge cuts on that bar that I got from Husqvarna, the, the, um, the X-Tough bar. And I think simply it's just stiffer. I think that's what it is. I have to repeat myself. The other thing I learned is, uh, relearned, is bucking a bunch of logs like that tight you know, a little bit on a hill where they roll into each other with a 28 is a pain in the neck because it's just, uh, other than the first few big ones, it's just too long. You end up trying to, you end up trying to spend time keeping it from scratching the log on the other side. So the 24 is probably the right size for me on that, partly because I'm used to them, uh, partly because they're long enough to get the bigger ones from both sides, but they're short enough that I don't constantly have to keep track of where the bar is. I'm going to use a 20 with a semi-chisel chain to go finish up. I've got some uh, bumps to go cut off, you know, some branches and stuff in a couple of uh, hinges. But the log truck's out there now. I don't know if I can get some video. It's just raining, you know. And I don't know if the camera is going to do anything properly for me. But uh, it'd be nice to get a little bit of that, you know. I don't know if this will pick up anything, but maybe I'll set it in the window on a tin can. And we can get a little bit of video, maybe. I'll just let it run. See if we can watch this guy load his truck. Well, that's what 4,000 board foot looks like. Another 700 on the ground. All loaded up. That's a lot of truck right there. I like doing this from time to time. That would be pretty much standard fare, 70s into the 80s, right? John Tread Husqvarna. Kind of a transition. Anyone know what these two saws are? And this is the cylinder that basically started it all for what we call original edition 372s. And here is a 390. Looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? This is a big version of a 372, and that morphed into these. Remember these things? You had the 575 and then 576, of which this is a 576. Look how small those ports are. Look at how small that intake is as compared to... Food for thought, guys. And along the same time, you had this design right here, the X Torque. And now you have this stuff. This one happens to be a little one. Anyone notice the difference here? Everyone's going to focus on these things right here. 
and I really hear people focus on the real big deal, and that's these things right here. 